This video is made for an adult audience. Hey Brick fans, welcome back to the Brick Bakery, where all our jokes are half baked. I'm Jacob and today it's time to start work on the interior of my police station. It's true, I'm back doing LEGO City updates right here on the Brick Bakery. Last week I showed you folks my wonderful LEGO backlog. I feel so lucky having a lot of great sets that I want to build. I don't know when I'll build them though, but I have to do that at some point, hopefully in live streams. But today I thought just to sort of ease myself back into city building, I would start off with a smaller project, namely making the interior for my police station. So let's head over to Bakersville and I'll tell you more about this project. And here we are at Bakersville everybody. Still plenty of work to be done in most of the city but today I thought I would focus specifically on one small part of it so I can say that something is actually finished because I've been waiting long enough making interiors for these buildings down here and today I'll be focusing on making an interior of this the small police station that is in Bakersville. It's been quite a while since I started work on these buildings down here at the lower part of the city and I really like these storefronts. They really add some great ambience to the whole city but interiors are sorely needed as the only thing you can actually see when you're watching them from the outside is maybe a hint of a green base plate and that's not what I want. So today I'll work on the interior for this police station and hopefully I can incorporate some of all the wonderful stereotypes that we see in police movies because there's a lot of fun to be had with that I think. But the first thing I need to do is to remove this storefront and actually count out how many studs I've got to do with. I got it out. It was a little more messy than I would have thought, but it seemed to have worked out in the end. The storefront is 10 studs wide and there's 12 studs in depth. Now I have to remember that I use three studs in depth for the storefront because of the depth that I've introduced into the storefront. So that's something I have to work with. And there's another thing I have to consider when I'm working on the interior for this. And that is that the floor level of this front is actually just about a brick, a brick and a plate above the actual base plate. So I have to remember to add some kind of platform uh, underneath the flooring so the floor would actually be at the same height or a fitting height as this door's bottom. So that's something I really have to remember when I work on this. I actually imagine that I can just maybe have a plate you know, sticking out here and then just build a platform and then build everything on that and sort of have this as sort of a, a drawer thing that can just be pushed inside the opening. Of course, there'll need to be walls as well to actually have that finished look. So um, yeah, that's the way I'll be doing all of this. The first thing to do, of course, is to add this platform which will function as the bottom. Here we go, that is the bottom layer and then I've got enough plates here to install a layer on top at the correct height so I can actually also tile uh, the floor in here because I think that would look good and I pretty much have to because there are three different colors here, the older uh, brownish gray and the newer bluish gray and of course a black one as well. That's just because I don't have this one in light gray as well. I could of course have used shorter pieces but um, I think this is all right uh, because I have to cover it all up with tiles anyway, tiles and furniture. And yeah, so uh, making a small platform would be the next step. Here it is, I made some scaffolding for the platform that I want to implement right here. Now I have to remember if I want to use these, this has to go the right way here because if not it wouldn't be able 
to stick there. Now you might have noticed that I've made this pattern here and that's just because someday, someday out in the future, I will have to disassemble this properly. So uh, it's easier to disassemble if you don't press plates together in sort of just on top of each other. And um, yeah, doing it like this should actually make it a little easier to work with in the future. Here we go, that's the floor installed. And as you can see, there's still one plate in height. That's for the tiling. So that should be ready. Now, I've got to remember that I've, I've, I have to add in a wall. So it will actually be one stud smaller in here than, um, than this plate actually is. So I've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in depth and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in width. So um, there's gonna be, it's gonna be a challenge to actually add too much in here besides the art desk and such. Now I do have something I do want to implement, which is this coffee machine right here. And that already takes up a lot of room when you're using that. Now, of course, I could place it here in front of the window. It wouldn't matter too much, I think. Uh, maybe even if I do it like this or something, else like that uh, it would be pretty good if i could do it like this maybe i think that'll look pretty good but i do have to remember that i want to add this on a plate uh, so we can actually accommodate the fact that this will be tiled in here or else it wouldn't be i don't think it will be able to open up the cupboard or it will just look weird so i've got to add some plates underneath this but i do like this little coffee station it's very 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 much like a police station now in Lego police station, there are often, very often, small holding cells and such. Now, I'm not sure I can actually include that here, but um, I will give it a shot. So uh, yeah, on we go with the interior. The first small build I've made specifically for this police station is this right here. This is a filing cabinet with a bunch of unsorted letters and papers on top. Now, this is actually pretty easy. This is just, this could be a one by two, but these are one by one snot bricks. And then a jumper plate on top like this to get the effect of a drawer, a very big drawer. These filing cabinets often have very big drawers. And just to give it a little sort of asymmetry to make it look real, I think one drawer up here is good. I could, I'm thinking whether or not I should actually add in one more. I'll try that and we'll see. Yeah, I think this actually looks better. It might be a little big compared to the uh, minifigs, but I don't think that's a real problem, to be honest. Uh, there's some sort of, shall we say, hyper-realism going on here anyway. So uh, yeah, uh, that's gonna be all right. Now, please notice that I've put uh, a flat, uh, a flat tile here next to this one, which is just a regular one by two plate. This is just a regular one by two plate. And then I've placed a bunch of jumper plates, white jumper plates to sort of simulate a pile of paper and placing one of these on top really drives that message home, I think. Now, the reason why I've added the blank one in this side is because I'm thinking this should stand here, for instance, and then I need room for the walls as well, because this would actually be touching the walls and wouldn't be able to lie this disorderly if I didn't do it like that. Maybe the other way would be good as well. Hmm, I don't know. And maybe, just maybe, I should actually make it thinner. While this is pretty realistic, the depth of it, I think, uh, it's taking up a lot of room in here. Either I made it thinner or I try to integrate it into the wall so I actually have a little more space, but then I have to turn this up here. I think this is going to be this is going to be a great solution, having it uh, sort of uh, ingrained in the wall. So I'll turn these around uh, like this, and again, I have to take into consideration that I want this paper to look disorderly, which means I do have to accommodate the wall that it'll be standing very close to. So something like this here would probably be good. Yeah. So here with this 
and uh, yeah we've got a filing cabinet now you can also see that i've added in this right here a prison door uh, i think just adding a wall here would be good because then we have walls like this and uh, yeah that's pretty good too so there we go um a desk maybe and uh, maybe some kind of situation happening i've also found a lot of pieces that could be good of course i'm talking about printed pieces like this a clock and some license plates in denmark at least when you want a new license plate for your car either if you bought a new one or you want a new one for some reason uh, you actually go to the police station so these should definitely be part of the uh, situation in here as well and a small keyboard because of course the guy that's in here needs a computer and another letter a couple of cookies as well because these policemen need something to eat and the top of a soda can because they also need something to drink uh, yeah so uh, moving right along making more of this interior I've made this little front desk here. Now this is just two of these uh, one by two corner or two by two corner pieces, which is rounded. And then of course a tile to match in this dark red color, another dark red colored uh, tile and a dark red one by two plate. So I can actually place stuff up here. This makes it seem a little more used, a little more cluttered, which I think is something that really lends realism to something like this. And then of course, just a snot one by two modified plate snot uh, with a couple of one by one plates on the side and then two uh, layers of plate as well to have the right height. Now this just needs a plate underneath to match the height of the rest of the things inside the police station because as I said before, the interior will be tiled. So yeah, I just need to add some plates underneath this. I've decided that this coffee machine is just too big for this build. I do like this coffee machine, machine don't get me wrong, but it's just too big. It seems too sort of squarish and big for all this. I can make something that's much smaller and much more efficient in actually communicating what it is. Now I'm just briefly considering, I think I should move this a little more forward because there's a lot of room here still and uh, then I can actually move this forward as well I've chosen to actually change the position of this because you can actually see it more obvious from the outside so yeah um, on we go on we go Here we go, this is the small coffee machine right here, much smaller than the other one, which is good. And uh, yeah, a stack of paper cups right here at the side, and of course a stack of cookies as well, on a small table with a one by one, uh, one by one round brick right here. So we can actually stand right here, which is pretty good, I think. This is a good spot. There we go. A lot of detailing at this point. I really like it. I think this is working out pretty well. Now, I'm thinking there should be something here as well, just to fill it up. And um, yeah, we need, this guy needs to be standing around here somewhere, something like that, ready to receive uh, people who comes asking for the lost dog or something, uh, which would be neat. Um, yeah, so uh, some kind of detail over here and uh, then I'll need to tile everything and maybe also consider some kind of detail inside the uh, small holding cell. Now remember, this is just a holding cell. This is not prison. So the sort of the size, the small size of it doesn't matter in the same way as it would have had it been a full uh, sort of prison. So yeah, that's, um, that is what it is. Here we go.
I've added this chair over here. Now this is gonna be built into the wall, which is why it looks like this. So what you're gonna be able to see is actually just this and the tile here beneath. Um, this printed piece is actually from an Ecto-1 or Ecto-1 and 2, which is, uh, I found parts of uh, one of those in a mixed lot at some point. So it's not because I've broken up one I have, this is just because I found some leftover pieces from one of those vehicles in a mixed lot. Yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking this would be a good point in time to be adding uh, the walls. Uh, or at least the first layer of walls and then maybe um, adding in the tiles so this can look a little more finished. I think this is going to be about it for this. Remember this is a very very small build so the interiors have to be uh, small as well. So details are plentiful but space is very 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 limited. So yeah, here we go adding in the first layer of the walls. That's the outline of the walls. I had to remember to add in a layer of plate just to uh, match the layer of tiles, which I'll be adding in uh, before I actually add in the rest of the walls because that is gonna be difficult once the walls has gone up. And I'm thinking I want to use uh, caramel tiles. Luckily, I've got a bunch of those right here. So yeah, that's gonna be the floor color for this. Okay, once I started putting these in, I realized they aren't, they aren't caramel. This is caramel. These are dark orange, but it doesn't matter too much. I think, I think it looks pretty cool, good as well. So I'll just add in some caramel in here behind the small front desk because that will look good because of the things I've already got in there. So hang on, here we go. And of course, some concrete flooring inside the small holding cell. Now, of course, I need a criminal or a robber or whatever you want to call them to uh, be standing in here, that's for sure. Now, I just discovered one thing I need to do differently. This is standing too close to the back. Um, I need to move this a little forward for it to actually have room. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna to put together a uh, criminal to put in here. There we go, there is now a crook, prisoner, criminal, whatever you call him, in the prison cell. And I've also moved the table back here so there's room for the wall. So what I need to do now is actually put in the wall. I've also made a small uh, uh, jumper plate right here so there can actually be somebody who's coming in uh, to the police station and maybe, I don't know, asking for help. So I think I've, I've got to ask, uh, I've got to make another uh, minifigure in here and I've got to remember to do something to add these license plates that's right here as well because those would be fun to have in here. Now, of course, I could try to match the interior colors with the exterior colors, but I think it'll be too dark in here if I do that. So I'm actually, I'm actually thinking the interior should be mostly white to make it most as much visible from the outside as possible. So uh, yeah, this light gray at the bottom, of course, matches the exterior as well. But uh, the rest of it, I think, should be uh, white or light gray or something like that. Maybe with a stripe uh, along the middle of it. Uh, but other than that, I think white would be, would be good. So yeah, that's the way I'm thinking about this.
Okay, so I have this idea that these license plates should be hanging on the wall over here. And that means I've got to rebuild this wall just a tiny bit because I need to have some snot bricks or something like that in here. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm taking most of this apart once again, just to have um, room for everything. All right, here we go. This is the police interior as it looks right now. I'll be adding another minifigure here, but other than that, I think we're almost good to go. I think I'll be adding one more layer of white bricks up here because then I'm pretty sure that it, um, shall we say, matches the height of the actual front. Now, I'm not gonna build this all the way up because there's no reason you can't see it from the outside. Anyhow, there's no reason to use all that brick for nothing. So yeah, here we go. Of course, it does need to be this and um, a couple of bricks more. Yeah, I'll put together a last minifigure and then I think it's time that we get this back over to the city. This is the guy that will be waiting in here for help. Uh, apparently he's lost his hat. Or oh, what, do I have his hat? No, I don't. So he's here to get his hat back, I'm sure. So that's good. He'll be standing here complaining. Oh, officer, officer, help me, help me, I've lost my hat. So yeah, that's what that is. And uh, this is the front, goes in front like this and yeah. It's all right, it's all ready to go back into the city and disappear forever. <laughs> Here we are back in the city and I think the easiest way to get this back, the police station back into this little space here is actually moving this one because there's also some wires with light bulbs, small light bulbs in there because I have actually tried to add lights. It's a sort of Christmas chain with lights on and it's not very sharp so it doesn't light up too well but um, yeah, it's in there and I need to be able to move that around just a tiny bit. So moving this will be the way to go. That's the building removed. And uh, here we go with the police station and putting that one back inside. It should be relatively easy, I think. Yeah, there we go. Very, very snugly it fits in here. And it seems to be interlocking very, very, very quickly with the plate. Now, I do find that the Lego base plates have a quite different clutch power than all other bricks. So this doesn't, this does seem to be correct. Yeah, here we go. That is the police station back. And of course, I'll be adding these lights up here. We'll see how that looks from the outside. I'll try turning him on. Don't expect any miracles though. And there are difficulties, of course, but um, we'll see if this works. The lights inside aren't too good at actually lighting everything up, but they are there and things are more visible like this than they were without. But the interior is going to be quite hidden. Now, I've talked about that before and how I find that's a bit of a shame, but it's all right because the sense of completion is good. So with that, I think I'll return to me and I'll say thank you for watching. Today, I worked on the interior of my police station and I am actually pretty satisfied with the result. I didn't realize how little space I actually had in there. So uh, I think the end result turned out pretty well. I liked 
doing this, it's always fun to make details like this. It's always a bit of a shame that details like this end up on the inside of buildings. So maybe I need to figure out how to add details like this on the outside of buildings in a meaningful way. I have no idea what I'm talking about at this point. Anyway, if you have any suggestions or comments, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to hear about it. But that is all for me today. I hope you'll comment, like and subscribe and hope to see you folks next time.